All right, so let's try that one more time. Vent valve open. Make sure our smoke machine is still rolling here. It is not. There we go. And we're hooked into our EVAP port right up by our purge valve. So right now we're venting. Let's close it. Pressure should come up and it does. And we're gonna let it sit there. And we're gonna open it and see if it drops. And it does. And we're going to close it again. And there goes our pressure. So we're not venting right now. Let's see if we have a leak. And we'll watch the ball and make sure she drops below 20. And there it goes. But we had a large leak code, right? P0455, I think it was, or whatever the hell. So that is a sealed system. So now that we let the pressure sit there for a little bit, let's try opening it. And it opened up. Tank pressure sensor is obviously working. Let's uh, close it. And open it. And close it. And again, we're going to let the pressure sit for a minute. So, it's been my habit to let them sit. Especially on GMs, they'll act up. So, I'll let it sit, let it sit. Open. And it opened. Close. And it closed. Open. Close. Ah, uh, it doesn't want to act up. We'll catch it in the act here. There we go. Opens. So everything's working. Close. <laughs> of course it's working fine. Alright, she's been sitting for a while. Let's try opening it. And there she went. Let's close it. Huh, it's not going to act up now. I just caught the thing in the act. Open. Close. Open. Close. Open. Close. Ah, uh, you dirty, dirty girl. I can hear it clicking. This vent valve is sticking. And I just caught it. Of course, I didn't have the camera on. Oh, come on.
now it's working. I gave you the old bang on the charcoal canister approach open. Closed. There it is. As soon as I banged on it. Look at that. See it? As soon as I pounded on the charcoal canister. Open. Closed. Now she won't close. There's her problem. So let me go tap on it once. Alright, so I tapped on it. Let's open it. Let's close it. Now you can see it's working. It's it's broken. Interesting. Let me go try tapping on her one more time. And there you go. Tapping on her. Open. Closed. Open. Closed. Now it's working again. We're done. Let's see what it takes to replace the vent solenoid, huh? All right, so we got the evap vent solenoid taken out of the canister. Just twists right out, pulls out. And a resistance value on that bad solenoid is 23.9, about 24 ohms. She's a little warm from working her, so we'll get a new one. No, yeah, we got a 2013 Chevy Equinox with a 2.4. It had a bad thermostat, so, you know, put a new thermostat in it, of course. She was sticking open. We're at 185 degrees, but the complaint was no, no heat coming out of the vents. It was pretty, uh, pretty piss poor. So just for grins and, what do they call it, shits and giggles. What do we got coming out of that vent? 163 degrees. What do we got coming out of the passenger side there? About 165. So I'm pretty sure this winter will be a nice warm one for this uh, this lady. Anyways, I thought it was kind of cool. So you're going to get these 1.4s and they're going to have a real slow coolant leak. And you're going to be like, well, where is it coming from? Come right on down yonder and she'll be dry. You can see it's wet right now because I flexed it. I flexed it. I flexed it. Just keep an eye out, right? So we get this light in there, right? Right there. And there it is. We're done. Needs assembly and it's all one unit. Get it right from GM. We got 2013 Chevy Cruze with a 1.4 liter, right? 1.4 liter P0300. And oh, yeah. Secondary problem. Time for a coil and plugs. That right there. That right there is what happens to a fuel pump control module power feed when you start poking holes in wires and not fixing them. Yeah! Ridiculous! What's going on today, guys? So I got this 2017 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3 VIN C LTZ. Now, their complaint was that this... Uh, this is the wireless charger for the phones, okay? Now, what's crazy about this, okay, so it doesn't work, but it does, okay? Um, if you lay your phone, you know, if I lay a, a compatible phone, and I'll get to that in a second here. If I lay a compatible phone in here just like it is, I don't get any charging. But if I, you know, hold a compatible, I can't do it right now because I don't have the phone that I tested it with. And, it, and um, But nevertheless, you lay the phone in there, and it won't charge well of course you know as you bring it up and that 
harness or wherever it runs in this console. Now, I've never dealt with this issue before ever, so it's new to me. But anyways, I know it's a wiring issue going to this pad, right? It's not a bad pad. It's just like there's probably a break where it pivots here. So <clears throat> we call up um, uh, GM, rather, you know, the local dealership here. And they're like, yeah, we don't see a lot of the pads fail. Um, but there is a list of phones that are incompatible with this charging thing. Now, I have a Note 10, okay, a Samsung Note 10, and my phone does not fit on this, okay? So it's worthless for my... Uh, sorry, guys. Service writer interruption. Um, where was I at? Oh, I was talking about these phones. Okay, so like... The GM's got a list of phones that are compatible with this charging pad, this wireless pad. And it ain't, and let me tell you, it doesn't cover Samsung like 7, 8, 9. I mean, basically every new phone is, this thing is worthless. Like, like I said, my Note 10 don't even fit on it. It's like, why wouldn't they, you know, why wouldn't they make this bigger? Or why is it here? Why, why, why would GM put this here and not here? Or, you know, somewhere where I can see the phone. I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> I thought I'd share that. I will. Um, I have no idea. We're, we're working on whether or not you can actually get a harness, a sub harness for this thing. Um, and you know, it's like one and a half hours to pull this whole console out and then take a peek. You know, I have no idea. I'm sure the wire broke in here somewhere, or whatever. But I'll make a follow-up video. I just thought I'd share this. I thought it was pretty wild. You know, starting to run into these uh, odd issues with accessories and of course you know not none of the information out on the aftermarket diagrams and stuff is really getting all the up to that much up to date i mean i found where this gets its power and ground from and power distribution of course um but i believe they call this the wireless charging module um you know and i don't know pretty crazy so if i get you know if we get this on it's obviously going to be a warranty issue um, so we're working with the warranty company right now, but, um, when I, if I, if we get the job or whatever to, to take this down, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make a follow-up video, but from my understanding, the customer don't even have a phone compatible with this. Um, and the, the husband doesn't, and I think the wife doesn't have a new enough phone for it. So who knows? I mean, like GM, come on, it's a 2017 for real. You can't. Uh, whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna rant, rave. Just wanted to share that. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> well, this one's got a complaint. They said their AC is poor. Well, there's the cabin filter on this. What is this a Dodge Grand Caravan? Yeah. Uh, that fan is shot. Of goodies in theirs. Well, we can pull an amperage measurement on it, but what's the point? That thing is shot. <sighs> Let me get it down once. Oh, there's more wrong with this one than just the blower motor, but since I'm on an amp clamp roll today. So just pull an amperage measurement on it. So we'll just clamp around one of them heavies going to the blower motor itself. Just for grins and giggles. Uh, we can flick around at 20 amp. We're clamped around. That's the codes that ran it. So it's probably got a wasted cat. This van's been used and abused. I'm not worried about that right now. With that cabin filter the way it was, of course you're not going to get good airflow. So that's the one I just got done doing on the Ford or the Lincoln. So we're already set up. Let's. Oh, yeah. What are we pulling there? 14 amps? Let's 
Let's see what that one looks like. Hmm. A couple bad segments in there. Sounds like the bearing just might have might have went in it. Uh, let it run a little longer here. Yeah, we're pulling like 13 amps. So five second screen. Ah, it's too much. Try to make it so we can just kind of watch it. There we go. So that's not high. Let's go one click down. No change. Click down. There we go. Losing our detail here. We can just AC couple it if we want detail. Let me just drop our time base down. And stop and zoom. Yeah. Motor shot. No doubt about it. So, what are we pulling there? 6 point, about 6 point, oh, what is that, 5.8 amps. Let's go down one more setting. About 4 amps, and that's low. 2.8 amps. You can see any much of a waveform there. So if we stop it, zoom it. Yeah, not much for segments there. We can drop the time based on, see if we can get a little more detail. So let's see here. We'll drop this down to a 500 millivolt, two millisecond screen. Stop it, zoom it. There you go. Now we got detail. Oop, a little too much there. Bring her on out. Yeah, this motor shot, obviously. Didn't even need the amp clamp for that one, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see what it looks like. Always is, especially when you compare it to a known good. So, needs a blower motor and a cabin filter, and I would say, considering that all the speeds work, we don't need the resistor module or the speed control module because all the all the levels work just fine. Everything's pulling amperage like it should. We just got a bad blower motor, and judging by the condition of that cabin filter it came out of there, it doesn't surprise me. So, there's that. Happy Monday. Yeah, real quick so you can hear them fans. Running real slow. Got the Altel command and I'm on. And yeah, they're completely wasted. In order to get them to turn on, I had to smack on the fan control module, so it'll be getting one of those. And uh, considering, uh, let's see here, considering we are pulling oh, let's see how many amps we're pulling. Well over 18 amps. Well over. I am not worried about powers and grounds for the module. So, obviously we got wasted fans, and we got a wasted module. Hence the overheat. We're done right there. <clears throat> oh, the fuckery just gets better and better. You hear all that hissing? Oh, I, oh. What in the world? Oh. That brake line was ran properly, and I did rub a huge hole in the back side of the suction line for the rear AC. Well, that sucks. Oh, look at all the beauty in the world. Where's the other half of that bird? Where'd the other half of the bird go? 
There it is, laying on the ground behind this car. What in the world happened there? <clears throat> Runs pretty nice. Pretty happy. I'm sure the customer will be too. To save this guy an engine. Love it. Ford 35, same motor you got. And your water pump rides on the timey chain here. This one is shot. Oh yeah. Destroyed. Love it. Oh. Sometimes there's just so much beauty in the world, my heart just can't take it. Poor little feller. Oh. Nummy. Benz 5.5 liter AMG supercharged. I think it's the 113 CLS SS. Automatic. It's a pretty cool car. I guess it's got meth injection in it. So, pulling it off to inspect this map. And. There's a reason for your map sensor codes right now. How come my Ford don't have the power it used to have? It's a mystery. Oh, what's in that what's in that airbox right there? Oh, all kinds of dog food. Got a treat for later. Okay, so I got this Mercedes um, Benz apart. Now, I removed the supercharger, and the reason I did is <clears throat> because our map sensor lives right here on the uh, lower portion of this intake, which is, you can see our supercharger is part of the intake. I mean, there are two parts, but I took the whole assembly out. It was a lot easier. Now. This map sensor here, the customer wanted it replaced because of the code, right? And I showed you in that first video the wiring that was damaged. Now, this was leaking oil all over it. Um, you can see the oil here. I don't know if it was just blow by from this um, clamp here, but my suspicion is since this wiring was wet as well, I cleaned that already um, on the throttle body. Uh, we have a PCV port and this bracket kind of holds it down. Now, mind you, this is the front side of the engine because you can see where the belt drives the supercharger. So, <clears throat> throttle body, I'll try to show you here. It sits up like this, right? On the back side. And right here, there's like a little tube inside of this elbow, this metered. Uh, breather here for the PCV. You can see the hole. Okay, well, this was just slid on there without a clamp. Now, I don't know if it's supposed to be clamped. I have no idea, but I clamped it. I put a crimp style cramp clamp on there. That baby's not going anywhere, and before I put this hose or this connection point on there, I just put a thin coat of um, anaerobic sealer on there and then crimped it. So hopefully that'll stop the oil from getting down into the connector on the map sensor which sits just like that okay and I'm, I believe that's what damaged the wiring and just you know all that oil saturation and I wasn't you know the customer wanted the map sensor replaced to be honest with you with all the oil saturation it had um, I probably would have just replaced it anyways now I'll tell you the book time was a half hour for this that's not right there's no way it can be right unless you have some kind of special tool to get in there to get these 
um, inverted torques or you know whatever the 12 points even with a wrench you can't get it down in here because the clearance you have to have a special tool now some guys might know a trick I don't know it so this is my my approach but <clears throat> this um, assembly sits in this valley and it's down in such a spot back by where this trans dipstick tube is okay you're not gonna get down in there and crack them free without rounding them off so rather than screw around and dick around with it forever <clears throat> I just took it out because you know two coolant lines I think it was like the two um, back hooks for the en the engine. You know, I took all the bolts out. It's not a lot of bolts. It sure as hell is not a lot of work to take this apart. It's just kind of tedious, and you got to be careful so you don't round things off. One thing I noticed about working on these Euro models, but nevertheless, that's the reason for all the issues. Now, I'm going to repin a connector. I've got the connector right here. So... I'll repin the connector, solder her in, wrap it up nice, and uh, this will fix her right up. And obviously we'll put some new gaskets on the upper and lower intake. Um, let's take a peek at that wiring real quick. already snipped the end off. Um, so, right here, oh, hopefully you can see that, is the wiring for the map sensor. So, you know, we'll, we'll clean all this up. Out, um, all this oil and stuff, clean everything up, strip it back, solder in the new connector, and uh, start reassembly, which will be pretty sweet because I'm sure this guy will be back, happy to get it back. But <clears throat> um, looks like when they took it apart and put it together before they used silicone on here, not good. Um, we'll use copper sealer on that, um, on those metal gaskets, and this thing will be good to go for whatever the racetrack I guess because this is the race car so pretty cool um, anyways I thought I'd share that um, I don't know how many people out there are rolling in a 5.5 supercharger but on these Benzes but this clamp doesn't hold that that uh, throttle body um, PCB system on there properly and it just blows oil all over you know I've obviously cleaned this thoroughly before I took it out but uh, yeah, something to look out for, so thanks for watching. Chevy Malibu 2011. Blower motor is bad. And what does GM want you to do? Oh, that's right. You gotta cut the blower motor out to install an aftermarket one. Because GM, in their infinite fucking wisdom, and how stupid they are, left you holes to mount an aftermarket blower motor assembly, but made the blower motor part of the actual HVAC box. Good job, GM. Another reason why I own a Ford. That's all. Someone's bound to get hurt. Try that again.
soon. Soon.